Research and discovery. Futurists. Twice a year, the De Gennaro family travels 600 kilometers to Rome from their hometown of Crotoni in the south of Italy. But they're not tourists. Ugo Matteo, their eldest son, suffers from a congenital heart disease, which in the very young is known as Blue Baby Syndrome. I can't play sports as much as I want, not football or basketball. I can play a bit, but not as much as other kids. They can play for one or two hours. I can play for only half an hour. Ugo needs special medical checkups every six months at the Bambin Jesu Hospital. The disease he suffers from is relatively rare, affecting about 400 out of a million. Ugo underwent surgery when a baby. Cardiologists must now decide whether, age 14, he now needs second surgery. This patient suffers from what doctors call tetralogy of Fallot. The flow of blood from the right ventricle in his heart to the pulmonary valve was partially blocked. He underwent surgery, the obstruction was eliminated, and the right ventricle outflow was enlarged. But by doing so, the pulmonary valve was destroyed. Over time, that destruction causes a chronic flooding in the right ventricle. To prevent further danger to him, we must decide if and when we must perform new surgery to implant a new pulmonary valve. The disease is complex and cardiologists specializing with children often lack accurate, in-depth guidance on how to proceed. In a pilot experiment, Ugo's clinical data has been included in a new European-wide database. The network should allow Ugo's cardiologist to compare his case with other similar cases around Europe so they can share information and plan Ugo's treatment in a better way. So the network has confirmed that there is in Europe a patient quite similar to mine. It is patient number 57, a boy from London. If we open the database for this patient, we will be able to analyze his clinical details. Here, for instance, we have a 3D graphic reconstruction of his right ventricle. And we can see from this data that this British boy was successfully operated on by surgeons. The implant of a new pulmonary valve was useful for him. He is healthier and doing fine. By studying this similar case, I can feel more reassured about my own case. If that surgery worked for that boy, it can also work for my patient. The network is still experimental and part of a European research project aimed at providing pediatricians with new tools to tackle not only heart disease but also brain tumors and rheumatism. The plan of this project is to build a database of biomedicine for pediatrics so different institutions all over Europe have access. Some cases are very rare and sharing knowledge with other institutions is very useful. One centre of excellence in the field of paediatrics is Great Ormond Street Hospital in London. At its Centre for Cardiovascular Imaging, dozens of patients like Ugo are scanned every year. The data is collected by cardiologists and cardiovascular imaging experts and it's all added to the Pan-Europe database. We scan them to look at 
uh, what the shape of the heart is, what the size of the heart is, what the size of the vessels that come out of the heart, but also importantly the function of the heart, how well it pumps, how much blood leaves the heart. And then we use that uh, information combined with the story of the patient, the examination of the patient and other imaging investigations such as echocardiography to decide how we should treat patients uh, um, and, and follow them up and manage them over time. Computer experts in the field like German scientist Martin Huber have a key role to play. He develops 3D graphics that help cardiologists to consider all surgery options. Graphics can help to determine if a patient needs full surgery or if a pulmonary valve can be implanted with new, less invasive techniques. Of course, the heart beats. It is a moving object. And plus, we have the additional problem with the children that the heart is not only smaller, but it beats faster than an adult. And you imagine trying to take a picture of a hummingbird's wings in flight? That's about what we are trying to do. This is the biggest challenge imaginable for medical imaging, but current scanners, magnetic resonance imaging, and computed tomography, we provide images of spectacular quality. Our task is to transform them and present them to the doctor. Jetzt unsere Aufgabe ist es nur entsprechend zu verarbeiten und dem Arzt wieder zu präsentieren. There's a lot of information we still get from patients where we have to put them to sleep and we have to get pressure data in the heart um, from, from, some, from some of these more invasive tests. And actually if we can use the engineers and the modeling to build uh, models that mean we don't have to do that but we can get the same information then that would be great because we could put somebody into an MRI scanner for an hour, they can watch their favourite DVD, we can get all the information and then we can plan importantly not only their treatment but also whether they need that treatment and when's the best time for them to get that treatment. This new scheme amounts to a massive mixing of computer wizardry and scientific skills. Its aim is simple to ensure Ugo and other young patients lead better lives so they can continue doing what they enjoy most. When I play basketball, my friends say I'm quite good at throwing free shots. When playing football, they say I'm a brave defender. 